Brother Ben. Shalom. I get two fillings yesterday and a crown. Feels way better now. When they put that temp crown on, that thing sucked. I couldn't even eat on that side. everyone at where is everyone at there you go cool. praise the almighty praise the almighty for zooms it's pretty warm today but I'm wearing this I don't want to show off, but it's a nice day out today. Um, blue skies. Got, you get a couple of decent San Diego style months in the bay, like two. It's like gets cold in October all the way to April. October, November, December, January, February, March, April. It's cold the majority of the time. It's garbage in the bay. And it's windy. Very windy. I mean, I like it when it's like a good breeze. Like San Diego has a nice breeze. This is windy. Cold windy too. So. We're spoiled living in San Diego. Definitely thank the Almighty. Thank the Almighty for this week. Had more work. That's a major blessing. It's been slow this last month. I have one more week of slowness next week. And then we got work. So praise the Almighty. Playing major catch up. Super behind. But I thank the Almighty. I was talking about with you about it. I'm actually going to hit on it a little bit in the scripture too today, dealing with discernment. But I thank the Almighty, you know, through it all, through the storms, through the troubles, through the heartache. And yes, no one wants to lower parts in your life or the depression or financial struggle or marital problems or children problems or whatever we don't want that but we still give honor and glory to the most high we still acknowledge that he's in control of all things at any time you know he could just snap his hands you know what i'm saying he don't need the, the affinity glove he just does it so um definitely just thank the almighty knowing that we fear him and we keep his commandments that we could go through any storm or any situation especially not only just keeping the commandments when you have true love for the brothers and sisters which we're going to get into today too and you know that the almighty knows that your heart is in the right spot he's there for you david's heart was in the right spot when he wanted to build the temple he just had bloody hands but at least the almighty acknowledged that his heart was right you know, his intentions was right. And so, in like manner, you know, when we go through our struggles, but we know, um, uh, 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 at least speaking on my behalf, I know I want the betterment and the welfare for all the brothers and sisters at True Hebrews United and all the brothers and sisters at even different congregations. That's in truth, not the false camps out there and whatnot, but cussing out people on the side of the road. But, um... <laughs> they're, they're playing frisbee golf and he brought his dog so he threw the frisbee and the dog was about to grab the frisbee and pick, bring it back so he had to stop him so anyways what time we got what do I mean show off I don't know 
thou knowest, thou knowest. So, oh, it's 37, it's past time. So, welcome to True Hebrews United, the Almighty Yeshua. This your beloved holiness instructor, disciple show drill sergeant, about to get into the book as usual. Definitely give all honor to the Almighty. Yah, through his son, Yeshua Mashiach, the only begotten of the Father. Definitely give double honor to the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the teachers, the elders, the bishops, the deacons across the whole planet. Teaching this word. Persuading people to repent for their sin and come to his gospel so it's everlasting too late. Yeah, I know. They, after they get done with this one, he'll be done. So, um, definitely uh, appreciate you, you ministers out there. All the brothers and sisters keeping the Almighty's commandments, statutes, judgments, precepts, and ways. Definitely appreciate you guys as well. And um, all the people on the Facebook, YouTube that share, like, and subscribe to the video. I appreciate you guys. I love you guys. I want you guys to make it into the kingdom. Yeshua's name. So we're going to be dealing with discernment part two. Discernment part two. And so, um, oh, I got to deal with the scripture of the day. Why you need a congregation. Because what I've been trying to do is there'll be one scripture of the day. Of why these people need a congregation. And then we'll get into discernment. Uh, 1 Corinthians, without said being done, let's let the fingers do the walking, the scriptures do the talking. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, we're going to be in that anyways. So, of why you can't obey the New Testament if you do not have a congregation. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let's start at verse 20, uh, 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 14. And I'll read it quick because this ain't the main uh, main topic I want to deal with. For, for the body is not one member but many. The body is many people, right? If the foot shall say, because I am not of the hand, I am not of the body, is therefore it not of the body? Since you're going to say, oh, well, I'm not the deacon, or I'm not this, or I'm not this, I'm not part of the body. And if the ear shall say, because I am not of the eye, I am not of the body, is therefore it not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? And if the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? But now have the Almighty set members. This is what the Almighty did. Set members, every one of them in the body as it pleased him. And if all were at, uh, one member, where were the body? But now there are many members, yet but one body. The eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee. Nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of thee. So, if you're saying, which the Almighty made apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, elders, bishops, and deacons, and you're saying you're a part of the body, but you're saying you don't need a minister, you don't need a watchman over you, then he's talking to you. Because you're going to say, well, I have no need of you. I have no need of this part of the body. That's what you're doing. So let's keep going. Verse 28, and God had set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, which include pastors and evangelists and all that, and the teachers, healings, helps, governments, so government of a congregation, diversity of tongues, um, and then I'll, I'll stop right there because this is our all apostles, what I was talking about, cover the end of the prophesy and whatnot. So the Almighty set up these ministers, but if you're saying, I don't need a minister, then that's like you saying, I'm part of the body, but I have no need of you. I have no need. I have no need of a piece of the body. He put every person in the body for a reason. So, once again, this will be condemning, this scripture will be condemning these people that do not have a congregation. So now, let's get into the main subject dealing with discernment. Let's go same chapter, chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. So I'm a, that's, that, that's going to be my thing. I'll just find scriptures. Some of them will be the same, some of them won't, of showing how. The, don't be deceived. These people, what, not without congregations, they ain't saved. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 10. To another, the working of miracles, to another, prophesying. To another discernment of spirits, and to another diverse kinds of tongues, and to another interpretation of tongues. 
So we're doing with discernment of spirits. Some people have the gift of discernment of spirits, but we could pray that the Almighty increases our discernment. Some people have our prophets, but we could pray that the Almighty gives me the, the ability to prophesy. Some people have the gift of healing, but through my prayers and fasting, I could pray to the Almighty and He may heal that person. No, I don't have the gift of healing where I could lay hands and the Almighty give me the ability to heal a whole bunch of people. But through prayer and fasting, he may hear my petition and I'll be able to heal people as well without the gift. Do you follow me? So even though if you do not have the gift of discernment of spirits, you could still pray to let the Almighty increase your discernment. And because discernment, once again, we read in, in, uh, in part one is to judge well or to judge uh, rightly is to be able to judge well so discernment of spirits we're dealing with the spirits of a, a person and not uh demonic spirits right now i'm not dealing with that is to discern or to judge a person's character correctly this is what we're dealing with right so i dealt with the people in the congregation so now i'm going to break this down i'm gonna be a little not a little abstract i'm gonna be a little abstract a little bit so hopefully you guys can see this I can't wait until I get an easel. Once I get into Belize, I'm going to get me a huge easel. So, let me, there we go. Let's see what's up. So I, now, I'm going to just call this all others. This is the first category. These are the people that do not like you. Or they're just not interested in a relationship. Some people just, do. they don't have a problem with you. They just don't click with you. Meaning... If you go to a party or you go to a gathering and you talk to a couple of people, there might be one or two that you have chemistry and you click with the other people. Ah, hi, how you doing? And it's just, it's nothing wrong that uh, they're your enemy or you don't like them. You just don't have a connection with them. You don't have nothing in common and you're just not compatible. Some people become close friends and some people just become acquaintance. There's nothing wrong with that. In that category, there are some people that just don't like you. There are some, the majority of people that don't like you, you will not know they don't like you. Because they might just be at your job and they're like, oh, how you doing? They say hi and they keep it pushing. They don't have to lie on you or gossip about you and go out of their way to put time, energy, and resources to try to get you fired or to try to uh, deframe your name, defamation of character, or try to uh, 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 use gossip and use, uh, use um, tactics to get people to join forces against you. So now you, you're in the outside group and they have three or four co-workers or people in their corner backing you while they attack your character or whatnot. Some people are your enemies. Some people you won't know they are because they just say hi and they keep it pushing. Some people you know that they don't like you because you got in arguments with. And some people generally are just not interested in having... Like when I go in the grocery store and I say hi to the person at the, the security guard or say hi to the person at the grocery store that's at the cash register... I'm, I'm not interested in building a relationship with that person. I walk by hundreds of people a day. I can't establish a relationship with everyone, right? This falls in these people categories, right? This is this is this is the category. Of, let's just sit, call it all others. And this is the category I want to deal with, right? Because you, you have this in orange. These are the chameleons. So you notice it's in pink, in orange, and pink again. These are the people in your circle. Some you can't get out of your circle. Some you can. I call them communions. It's because they're in your circle. We're going to get into the scripture, but I'm giving you the definition. I'm giving you how we're using this playbook, and you're going to decipher what. We're going to get into this scripture. We've got a lot of scripture to cover. These are the people that are in your circle, and they're only around you because it's beneficial from them. Now, as I do this Bible study today, I want you to sit back and analyze every person in your circle. It could be a co-worker, it could be family, it could be so-called friends. I want you to sit back and think about everyone. And these these people, and this is why I made this bigger, and we're gonna get into the percentage of this in a little bit. This, this block is bigger, because you have the majority of people are in this block. That's in your circle, people that you have to deal with. They, um, they do, they're only around you because it's beneficial. They do not reciprocate 
the same energy that you put in the relationship because they they generally don't care for you they're not a hundred percent in your corner they're only around your presence because they reap some kind of emotional count some kind of benefit almost like uh how women put guys in the friend zone they just want someone to vent on how this dude's bad or whatnot they just want free validation it's okay or you're gorgeous they want some guy that they don't have to commit to but they can they could get validation and have get resources or take them out or whatever right same thing all right may um they will never have mutual reciprocation they will not do equal equal now it, it doesn't have to be monetary it could be say if say if someone uh, you have a friend that uh, a so-called friend that uh, may be more financially stable or not right but they come and visit you when you're sick or they come pick up your kids they have genuine care and concern these people the chameleons they'll never do that they will never do things at their inconvenience they, they won't if if they're in a if you deal with these people and it's at a loss to them like a serious loss they won't be there for you some of them are envious and some of them are your enemies some of them plot for your destruction and these are people that you think are with you like we just read in uh, part one some just came for the fishes and the loaves some this is why they live in sin why they feast with you why they come to the feast days and they say shalom and they're coming fringed up and they do all this stuff and they're really in sin they have they just want people to be around they just want to show out their new outfit they just want the clout or they just want the the um uh to be in a group because it's beneficial to them right hold on i'll give some examples and then I'm going to give you the third category. Examples. You'll notice that these people will never call you. And your whole relationship is based upon you calling them. But they never take the time to visit you. It's always you visiting them. And I've had that. Trust me, I'm going to... There's, there's people, there's brothers and whatnot, or supposedly brothers, or you think they're your friends... But you notice they never come and visit you. They'll never take the time to visit you. Or they'll never take the time to call you. It's always you calling them, right? So. And or. They only call you because they're bored. They call you because they have nothing to do. It's not beneficial for them. You have one group. This is the same group. You might have one person that is not beneficial for them to call. Because they will have some uh, care and concern for you and for your welfare so if it's not beneficial for them to call you they just don't call you they don't care how's your day what's going on how's your kids and whatnot and you may have the same same different type of chameleon that will call you but they only do it because they're bored they only do it because i don't got nothing else going on let me just call sister so-and-so or call brother so-and-so or call this dude oh uh, with you nothing much and they just call you to pass time they don't generally care and concern for you have a care and concern from you they're just doing this just to pass time. And you could tell by how the conversation is. You could tell he's just trying to kill time. He don't care. He's just bored, right? These are the chameleons. We're going to call these the chameleons, right? They're only around you because it's beneficial. And I want you to sit back and think about every person in your life that you deal with. And we're going to deal with these scriptures. And I want you guys to start using some discernment. Because how you place your move on the chessboard will be different based upon if you could discern who is and who is not in your corner who's a chameleon or who's a all other right so then you have this group we'll call this the genuines these are the people that truly care and concern for you that are truly in your corner that truly love you truly want the best for you right uh, th this applies to ministers you go to some churches and they just want ties and offering they go to some churches they just want you there to have more members, to have the clout. Like, look, we got 500 people, or we got 50 people, or we got 20 families. But they could care less about if you have food in your fridge. They just care because you're just one more number to make it seem like I'm a successful minister. Or look at how the Almighty's moving or whatnot, right? So let's keep going. So now you got the people that are genuinely caring and concerned for you and want the best for you, right? 
Now you're going to notice, and these percentages, is this is anecdotal, so these percentages could be different for you, right? 30% of these people are, that you're around, I'm not dealing with people that you just drive by at the stop sign that are interested in you. I'm dealing with people on the job, family members, people that you deal with, people at your congregation, right? They just generally don't have any interest. Some people don't like you. Some people are your enemies. Like they, they'll go out of the way and they want to see your destruction. But 60% of these people are in this. They're chameleons. 60%. They're actually worse than here. Because these people, you don't let your guard down. You don't get caught slipping from these people. These people will catch you slipping. And we're going to deal with provisions for this in a little bit, right? And then you have a maybe, maybe 10% actually care for you. But the problem lies is when you don't use discernment, you add this 60% to this 10% and you think 70% of the people in your circle, in your life, your family and your friends are in your corner and they're not. When you do not have a decent level of discernment. All right. So you follow. We're going to get into the scriptures. I just want to break this down so you understand. And I want you to think about every person you deal with in your life and sit back and say, hey, are they truly in my corner? Do, will they truly come in the time of need? And if they're not, then how do we deal with the chameleons? And now, how do you base your strategy of life based upon who is and who isn't in your corner? Because you're going to make bad decisions if you cannot discern the character of people correctly. You will burn yourself. It will be to your ruin. Let's keep going. Oh, we're going to get into that in the scripture. So this may be different. It may be 50 or 30 percent, and this is bigger. Maybe you have more enemies. I don't see why you have so many enemies. Most of the time, my enemies is because I serve the Almighty, and I don't steal or I don't gamble, and people get, get self-condemnation, even though I'm not condemning them, and they don't like me because I serve the Almighty, and their life is condemned by it. But you'll notice that this is very small. This will be bigger if you have a congregation. Because your people, like a congregation in truth, you will still get the chameleons in the congregation. We just read that earlier in discernment part one. You will still have these chameleons in the congregation. As the numbers grow, the filter, become, it's, it's less likely for you to filter out the people that are coming for true attentions as the congregation grows. It's easier for wolves to come in in sheep clothing as the, if, when you have a hundred members. It's easier for them. Because you don't get the one-on-one. -on -one. You just shake their hand. You see that they come. They outreach, whatnot. We don't know. So you will get chameleons. The bigger a congregation grows, the more chameleons that will come in, right? You follow me? So now let's get into the scriptures, and we're going to deal with this. So this is how we play in this game. All right. Go ahead and give me 1 Kings chapter 13. It's not a lot of scriptures, but we'll be reading a lot. 1 Kings chapter 13. And I want you to think about this and, and see if this has ever happened to you in your life. I want you to I'm gonna have you guys comment if this ha has happened to you. First, First Kings chapter 13, verse 1. And behold, there came a man of the Most High out of Judah by the word of the Almighty unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar of burnt incense. And he cried against the altar, the word of the Almighty, and said, O altar, altar, thus said the Almighty, Behold, a child shall be born in the house of David, and Josiah by name, and upon these shall offer the priests of, the uh, the of this high places, and burn incense upon it, and the man's bones shall be burned upon it. So he condemned the altar, because they made an altar outside of Jerusalem, and he condemned them, right? So we're going to go down verse, verse 7. So the king got upset. The, uh, he ended up praying for the king because his hand got beat up and whatnot, and then he couldn't bring it back. And the king said, "Pray for me." And this is what after the king prayed for him, and he healed him. Verse seven. And the king said, "Man of God, come home with me and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward." And the man of the Almighty said unto the king, "If thou wilt give me half thy house, I will not go in with thee; neither will I eat bread or drink water in this place. For so it is charged me by the word of the Almighty, saying." Eat no bread, drink no water, nor torn again by the same way that thou cometh. So he says, I can't go with you because the Almighty said, wherever I go, 
how I return back home has to be a different way. I cannot go backwards. And that's the same thing as you guys and you're walking the Almighty. You should not be going backwards to sin, right? So he said, I cannot go backwards, right? Let's keep going. So he went another way and returned by the way that he came to Bethel. Now there dwelt an old prophet. Uh-oh. An old prophet. And Bethel and his sons came and told him all the works that the man of the Almighty had done in the day of Bethel. And the words he had spoken unto the king, they told him unto his father. And his father said unto him, What way went he? For his sons had seen him in the way the man of God went, and they came unto him. And he said unto his son, Saddle me a donkey. And so he saddled him the donkey and he rode thereon and he went after the man of the almighty and found him sitting under an oak and he said unto him art thou the man of god that came from judah and he said here i am so here's an old prophet maybe the almighty's not using him no more whatnot so he wants to go and meet a prophet of the most high and who win it right ask questions be around a man of the most high right he goes to him right let's keep going and he said unto him, Come home with me and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in thee. Uh, for it was said unto me by the word of the Almighty, Thou shalt eat no bread, nor drink no water, therefore, nor turn again by the way which thou camest. And he said, I am a prophet also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Almighty, said, Bring him back with thee into the house that he may eat uh, bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. So this dude, for no reason, finds the man of the Most High that was sent on a mission, and he was returning back from his successful mission. He lies to him for no reason. He finds out he's a man that lies to him just so he could be in his presence and talk with the man of the Almighty to bring him back, right? Let's keep going. Once again, oh, I'm a prophet too. He becomes the chameleon. He wants you to let your guard down. These people in your life... They want to show rapport. They want you to let your guard down so they could get so they could reap some kind of benefit from you. Let's I, there's people at the gym. Here, I'll wait, I'll wait on those examples. Let's keep going. So he went back with him and he did eat bread into his house and drink water. And it came to pass as he sat at the table, the word of the Almighty came unto the prophet that brought him back. Now the word goes to the false prophet that lied. So the Almighty speaks to the frost prophet, and what it says, And he cried unto the man of God, and saying unto the Jews, saying, Thus saith the Almighty, For as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but cameth back, and hast eaten bread and drink of water in the place of which the Almighty said, Eat no bread, nor drink no water, thy carcass shall not come into the sepulcher of thy fathers. And that's pretty bad, because you want to be buried with your family members, right? And it came to pass that after he eaten bread and after he drunk, he settled his donkey and his wit that the prophet whom he had brought back. When he was gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way and, uh, and the donkey stood by it and the lion also stood by the carcass. So the Almighty killed that prophet, the, the real one, not the one that lied, the real one, right? And he, when he was gone, uh, verse 24, and the man passed by and saw the carcass Passed by the way, and the lion started by the coffers, and they came and told the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who disobeyed the word of the Almighty. Therefore the Lord delivered him unto the lion which has torn him, and slain him according to the word of the Almighty which he spake. Oh yeah, duh! Because you lied to him and brought him back, because you just wanted to be in the presence and you want to be around a prophet. Let's keep going. And he spake unto his sons, Saddle me a donkey, and they saddled him one, and he went and found the carcass in the way, and the, don and the donkey and the lion standing by the carcass, and the lion had not eaten the carcass nor turned the donkey. And he took up the prophet's carcass of the man of the Most High and laid it upon the donkey and brought it back. And the old prophet came into the city and mourned and buried him. Right? And he laid the carcass in his own grave, and they mourned him over, saying, Alas, my brother. And it came to pass that after he buried him, that he spake unto his son and saying, When I am dead, then bury me in the sepulchre where the man of God is buried. Lay my bones beside his. Now you want to get buried by him? You lied to him. You said I'm a prophet too. You lied to him just so he could come home and eat. Then he dies because he thought that you, the Almighty, was speaking to you, which he wasn't. So now he disobeyed uh, because your lie, he disobeyed the commandment of the Most High. He dies, you bury him, and then now you want your bones to be buried by him? This is why we need discernment. Is because if we don't, 
learn how to judge people's characters correctly, it will be to your ruin. I've seen people, a, a lot of uh, Indian people, not all, a lot of Indian people are prejudiced. I've seen this in, in the Bay. But these same people that want nothing to do with me, they will come to me and say, oh, what kind of supplements you take? Oh, how do you work on this? How do you work on this? Oh, I'm not good enough to you to hire me. I'm not good enough for you to befriend me or invite me to your house, but I'm good enough for you to ask me questions to better your gains in the gym, to ask me what supplements you can. See, they will show that they're cool and they, they want you to let your guard down because when your guard is up, I cannot catch you slipping. If I'm trying to sucker punch you, I'm like, oh, this and this and this and this and this, and then I'm acting cool or whatnot. And I once they look to the right, just be ready because they look to the right. They're, they're like, if their friend like, man, this dude, and they're just going to take off real quick. They're like, they'll do this back up and like look over their shoulder and you know it's coming. But if you're ready and he comes and you take a step back and you're like, no, nah, you have your guard up. He's less likely to sucker punch you because he knows you're ready for the counter. So he wants you to let your guard down. They come to you and they act like they're cool and they're, they may come to your house. Or they may even say, hey, let's carpool. They may actually be beneficial to you, but they do the bare minimum because they're not truly interested in you. So they're not going to invest in you. Let's say a woman, you take a woman on a date. It's beneficial to her. Yeah, she has to get dressed and whatnot, but she gets on a date. He takes her a hard time. She comes again, takes her second, third date. But you notice she's never offering to pay. You notice she's never trying to buy you anything. You know, it, she, she's only benefiting from you taking her on three or four dates. But it's not reciprocated. She's not, oh, I'll pay for the gas. Or, hey, I'm gonna, I want to treat you this time. Or, i seen you like baseball hats. I bought you this baseball hat. She's not trying to, because she's not invested in you. And so these chameleons will come and not truly be invested in the relationship they have with you, but they want to get some benefits, so they need to do the bare minimum for you to let your guard down so they could do you in. Some of it isn't to your own destruction, but some of it is just to siphon your resources and your time and energy. Some, it could just be... Uh, I'll get into some more examples. Let's get into some more examples. Give me Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. Once I read that story, man, the first time I read that story, it makes you hot. Like, dude, this man of God was just minding his own business, keeping the commandments of the Most High. And then now you just got him and he can't be buried with his father. And now you, when he comes and you want your bones buried to his, like just an ultimate disrespect, blatant disrespect, disregard, you know. But let's keep going. Numbers chapter 11. Starting at verse 4. Numbers chapter 11, starting at verse 4. Yeah, for sure. Uh, agreeing to what you just said, uh, Brother Vince. Numbers chapter 11, uh, verse 4. Let's get it. And the mixed multitude was among them fell lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? We remember the fishes which we did eat in Egypt freely, and the cucumbers, and the melons, and the leeks, and the onions, and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away, and there is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. So they're complaining, right? All right, I'll keep reading. We'll read to um, 10. And the manna was a, uh, was as corridor seas, and the color thereof was the color of bedellum. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it into mills and beat it into mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was like the taste of fresh oil. And when they, when they drew, uh, when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. And Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, every man in the door of their tents. And the anger of the Almighty was kindled against them greatly, and they were also displeased. So, they, it became inconvenient to continue this relationship with the Most High. Now, relate this to people. I'm going to show you some examples. It becomes inconvenient. Now, they've seen the plagues that they put on Pharaoh. They've seen the split into the Red Sea. They've seen the manna come down. They've seen the water out of the rock. But once their relationship with the Most High, our P, 
people's relationship, the chameleon's relationship with you become inconvenient to them. Once they become inconvenient, they rebelled against the most high. Right? They rebelled against the most high. Oh man, we were, it was better off to be back in Egypt and this and this. You will find people. This is why they do the bare minimum around you. These people you think that your friends are chameleons. They're not. They don't, they're not genuine your friends. Once the relationship, a co-worker on the job, your husband, your wife, your children, your mom, your dad, once it becomes inconvenient, they will discontinue it or they will just not want to participate. You see where there's wives. Soon as their husband, when their husband's working, it's fine. When their husband gets laid off in a financial struggle and she has to go back to work and she has to act, it becomes inconvenient when her husband has terminal cancer or her husband becomes disabled and she has to push him in a wheelchair, she divorces him. This is what I'm saying is there's some, there are a few times where you do not see red flags. It's pretty hard for a person to establish a relationship with a person for five or 10 or 20 years and not see any red flags. And yes, you, you may not know because there might be no red flags until a real restriction, inconvenience, or uh, uh, they, we call it put a load. Like uh, with electrical, you need to put a load. You need to put a load on it or put some restraint on or some restriction on it to see if the relationship lasts, right? To see if, if your friends or your mom or your dad, how strong your relationship. And it takes the right scenario, like this situation or the situation with your friends, the right scenario, will your friend cheat on you with your girl? When your friend let you down, will your friend help you out? Under the right circumstances, will you see if he's a genuine friend or he's not? Is he a genuine brother in the Almighty or is not? But let's keep going. See, people do this with the Most High too. And if they do it with the Most High, of course they're going to do it with you. It has been normalized for people to just be chameleons. People have, and, and we're we're at fault for it. I'm at fault. You're at fault for it. Because we allow people in our lives knowing they're chameleons. And somehow we just, you may not necessarily know they are, but you see the red flags and you accept it. And so what is going to promote them to change? You see that, you see that they're not genuine, but you still allow them to be in your circle. And because of that, you get upset. You men out there are, are the blame too. When you see a woman and she gets beat up by a, a guy, her boyfriend, black eye and everything, and you're like, oh, you need to leave her. And she goes right back to the guy. You're like, man, she's foolish. But us guys, we do it all the time. Because we know some of our boys aren't even our boys. They're chameleons. They're there because you smoke weed together. Are you there because you say shalom or you there because you keep the fees day? But push come to shove, they are not your boys. You see this, but you still go back to these people. You women do it too, but a lot of men do it because I get it. You you want you want some buddies. Some of your buddies are just there because you have things in common. They're only your buddy because you have weed in common or you have alcohol in common or you have the gym in common. If you take what you have in common out the way, would you have a relationship with them? Well, no. Well, then he's not really your boy. So why do you continue a relationship with these people? You're the blame. You're no different than a woman that gets beat up by a dude and goes back to the dude because these chameleons. This is why I say pray for discernment. These chameleons are in your life and you're allowing them and it, they're draining resources, time and energy from you. It will be to your ruin. Some of your success in life, will, will not, you will not even be your, the best person you are is because you're trying to help out chameleons that don't have the best interest for you. Let's get another example. And then we're going to go with some good examples too. Go ahead and give me uh, Joshua chapter 9. Joshua chapter 9. Verse 3. Joshua chapter 9, verse 3. And uh, discernment, if you haven't seen discernment part 1, please check out part 1. This is discernment part 2. We read when they came and followed al -Mashiach. Thousands of people came and followed al to hear his teaching. He says, you seek me because you ate fishes and loaves and you were filled. 
They came for the fishes and the loaves. He says, you didn't see me because you've seen the miracles. You see me because you ate and you were filled. Some people sought him just because they wanted to be blessed. Some people sought him because they wanted healed, to be healed from their leprosy. Not that they want to know that the kingdom of God uh, uh, has come. The kingdom of the Most High is at hand. Not because they wanted to understand the parables. Not because they wanted to know the way of life and, and have eternal salvation. They just, hey, I just got leprosy and I heard this man be healing people from leprosy and that's it. Let's keep going. Joshua chapter 9. Verse 3. And when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard that Joshua had done unto Jericho and Ai is when they first came into the land, right? They first and they destroyed Jericho and then they got beat up in Ai because uh, uh, Achan took some, some an accursed thing and then they finally destroyed Ai. Let's keep going. Um, verse 4. They did work willingly and went and made as if they'd been ambassadors and took uh, sacks of, of, their don uh, of their donkeys and wine bottles old and rent and bound up. Old shoes clouded upon their feet and old garments and bread and their provisions was dried and moldy. So they took the worst. And they went unto Joshua and said unto Gideon and said unto him and to the man of the Israel, We come from a far country and therefore make a league with us. And Israel said unto the Hevites, Peradventure you dwell among us. How long will we, how will, shall we make a league with you? And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who art thou? And they said, From whence do you come? And they said, From a very far country. The servants have come because the name of the Almighty thy Yah. So now they start lying again. For we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did in the two kings of the Armorites, which be on the Jordan, and Sion, the king of Heshbon, and all the king of Bashan, which is at Ashtaroth. Wherefore the elders and all the inhabitants in the country spake unto us, saying, Take victuals with you in their journey. And go meet with them and say unto them, We are thy servants, therefore make a league with us. This is our bread which we took forth out provisions out of the household of the day we came forth out unto you. And behold, it is dry and moldy. And these bottles which were filled were, were new, and behold, they are rent. And these are our garments and shoes uh, become old by reason of a very far journey. And the man took their victuals and asked not the counsel at the mouth of the Almighty. We're going to get into this in a little bit. And Joshua made peace with them. And made a league with them, and let them live. And the princes of the congregation swore unto them. And it came to pass at the end of three days, after they made a league with them, that they heard that they were neighbors, and that they dwelt among them. And the children of Israel journeyed and came unto the cities on the third day. Now the cities were Gibeon, and Chirifoth, and Beroth, and Kirjurim. And the children of Israel uh, smote them hot not, because the princes of the congregation swore unto them by the Almighty Yah of Israel. And all the congregation murdered against the princes because they made a, a covenant and swore unto the Almighty. And in the law, it says if you make a covenant or you vow a vow unto the Almighty, whether good or evil, you have to keep that vow. But let's keep going. But all the uh, congregations we have sworn unto them by the Almighty, now therefore we may not touch them. This will we do in them. We either let them live, lest the wrath be upon us, because the oath which we swore unto them. And all the princes said unto them, Let them live, but let them be hewers of wood and drawers of water unto the congregation and the princes which he uh, promised them. And Joshua called them and spake unto them, saying, Wherefore have you beguiled us, and we are very far uh, when you dwelt among us? So they lied to him, right? And they lied to them to, for them to let their guard down. And I'm going to tell you how these chameleons lie to you. Now, therefore, you are... Uh, you are cursed, and there shall none of you be free from your bondmen and hewers of wood and drawers of water into the house of my God. So they lied to him because they wanted peace with them, not because they really believed in the Almighty, not because they really wanted to serve the Almighty, but because they didn't want to be destroyed. So verse 14, it says, And the man took their victuals and asked not counsel out of the mouth of the Almighty, because they would have got discernment, and they would have found out the truth. Remember, discernment is to judge accurately. Now, once again, this is the second time where someone lied to let their guard down. See, these people, these chameleons, they, they won't flat out necessarily lie to you. Some of them will, right? They won't necessarily lie to you, but they will live a lie. Kind of like the rappers that really don't have a lot of money, but they get fake jewelry and fake watches. And they make their videos and they put all this money to give the image of wealth. So they want to live a lie. That's actually a lie. But these people will live a lie. And how do they lie to you? Because they come to you 
as they're genuine and they truly have your welfare in their best interests and they truly care and have concern for you when they don't so they lie to you for you to let your guard down so they could get some kind of benefit from you even if it's just to have someone that i could vent to some place i could go just to hang out whatever the reason is there's different ways why people will siphon time energy and resources from you some people will just be your friend knowing that okay one day, if I need to ask for 20, 200 bucks or 500 bucks and whatnot, if I be cool with this guy, I'm not going to ask for nothing now, but eventually I get some. So, some people will just marry a man that they have no interest in just so they could get a, a kid or two and get alimony. Some women will, and this is why uh, guys don't like spending money on the first date. They want to just go for coffee or tea. Women will boast. You see it on YouTube. They'll boast how they went on two or three dates that same day and they just go for a free lunch they will they're not sexually attracted to them because they're not attracted to them physically right but they will just give their number just so they could take them out on a date so they could get dinner when they're bored or have nothing to do and so you just literally wasted this man's time energy and resources and you're not even interested in him he has no chance of trying to develop a relationship or see if he's compatible with you because there's no chance and so why did you waste his time but once again, she lies. She lives a lie and acts like she's interested. He lets his guard down, say, hey, talking on the phone, text or whatever. Hey, I want to take you out. She takes out, spend 20, 30 bucks on gas. Whether they go walk the beach, go get lunch, go to dinner, 60 bucks on dinner. Let's say out the day from, from the beginning to the end, let's say 60 to 100 bucks for that one day. So he's out 60 bucks for no reason. For no reason. And this is what discernment comes in. This is why you we need discernment because these, if you, if the majority of people are in here, and you just count these people as the genuine people, you just automatically count these people as genuine. You, you will suffer so much, and it'll be like, it'll be like you losing a drop of blood every day, until you finally pass out. You start getting blue. Your tongue, your you can't feel your lips. You're slowly depleting your blood or your life force until until you're done. You you look how many hours you invested in people that have no intention for your for your welfare. Let's keep going. Let's get some shout outs. Alright. We did Joshua. Let's get some shout outs. Shout outs. Let's see some comments. No comments? Alright. Shout outs for today. Davin, Vinny Kovesh, Gia, the Queens of Hearts, Claudia Macias, Katura, Karen, Baron Camp, Kamari, Ariel, Jason, Zadek, Nava Shadeh, Nava Kasheh, Zahara, Ahava, Occupate, and let's get it. So, shout outs. This is why I say believe not every spirit, but try the spirits of whether it's God or not. All right, so we have these three categories, right? We got these people that are your enemies. They don't like you, uh, are just not interested in a relationship with you. We got the chameleons, the people that do not have your best interest, but they portray and they live a lie like they're your friend and really not. And then you have the junior people that really care for you. Now, which category? So we got all others, chameleons, and genuine people. Which category is the majority of car dealership salesmen? Which category would you think that they'll be in? The majority of them. When they come and you come to that parking lot to buy a car, oh, you're looking for a car, this and this, that, and that, oh, this and this. Yeah, we got a good promotion, this and this. Oh, how, oh, so you're married, you got kids, oh, your kid, what's your kid's name? Oh, your kid's all this. I got a kid too, this and this and that, same game. Oh, you play, oh, well, you play football, oh, I like football too. What's your favorite team? Oh, that's my favorite team too. And they're trying to build a rapport. They're trying to build a relationship and portray like you have something in common portray like he's interested in if you're married or not 
he don't care if you're married or not. He don't care how many kids you are. In about two or three months, he ain't even going to remember your name. After he sells you this car, if you pass by him at a grocery store, he's probably not even going to recognize you. Now, I'm not going to speak for every car dealership because there's no absolute. But these people are trained chameleons. They take being a chameleon and they take it to make money off of being a chameleon. And I'm going to be a car dealership. I'm going to be a car salesman, right? I'm a car salesman and I make my money off commission. So I, I can't come and act like uh, a be rude. I can't come and just be face value and say, no, nah, I really don't care about you. I just want to sell you this car. I can't do that. Of course they can't do that. No one's going to want to buy a car from them. So what do they do? They be the chameleon, right? And I'm not saying there's some uh, car, uh, car salesmen that care for the customer. And that's what good business is when you really, truly have care for the customer. But the majority of people, they, they, they make money. I got bills to pay. I got bills to pay. There's some people at the daycare that do care for the children. And there's some people that I, I do it because it's a job. There's some people that train people because it's good money and they just do it for a job. And some people, they really want results and they care. Some people, they just train you and they just want you to get a little bit of results so they can milk you. If I get her all her results in six weeks, she's not going to need me no more. How can I make this six weeks turn into three months so I can keep milking, milking more money, milking more money? But I'm going to be nice. I'm going to be cool. I'm going to think, I'm going to think that she, I'm going to have this guy or have this girl think that I really care about her. But really, I just want to get money. I just want to get her to use me as long as possibly available, right? Let's keep going. So have you guys start, have you guys found one or two of the people that's in your, that you think are your friends or think care and you, when you have you sat back and you realize that this person is not genuine, has that happened yet? It should be happening. I want you to look at every person in your life and think and sit back and say, is this person truly a genuine or are they a chameleon? Are they just in my life because it's beneficial for them? Let's keep going. Give me uh, Exodus chapter 18. Let's look at some good examples. Exodus chapter 18. Ready? Let's get it. When Jethro, the priest of Midian, Moses' father-in-law, heard that all that the Almighty had done for Moses and for Israel uh, and the people. How much time we got? I might skip this because I want to read this whole chapter. Oh, we got to go quick. So Moses and the Lord have brought all the people of Israel out of Egypt. So I'm going to skip through. I'm going to skip through to 13. So Moses' father-in-law came, right? And it came to pass on the morrow that Moses sat to judge the people and the people stood by Moses in the morning unto evening. And when Moses' father-in-law saw that all that he did, the people, and he said, What this that thou hast done unto the people, why sittest thou self alone, and all the people stand by thee from the morning? And Moses said unto his father-in-law, Because the people come unto me to inquire the Most High, and when they have a matter, they come unto me, and I judge between one another, and I do make them know the statutes of the Most High and his law. And Moses' father-in-law said unto him, This thing that thou doest is not good. For thou will surely wear away both thou and this people that is with thee. For this thing is too heavy for thee, for thou art not able to perform it by thyself alone. Hearken now unto the voice of, unto my voice, and I will give thee counsel. And the Almighty shall go, uh, shall be with thee. Be thou far for the people of the Almighty God word, that thou may bring the causes of the people. And thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws, and thou shalt shew them the way where they must walk and work. What they must do. Moreover, thou shalt provide out of the people able men such as fear the Almighty, men of truth, having hate and covenants, and a place to such over them, and be rulers of a thousand, rulers of hundreds, and rulers of fifties, rulers of tens. And let them judge the people in all the uh, at all season, and shall be every great matter that they shall bring unto thee, but every small matter thou shalt judge, so it shall be easier for thyself, and thou shalt bear the uh, they shall bear the burden with thee. And if thou shalt do this thing, the Almighty hath commanded thee so, then thou shalt be able to endure, and all the people shall go to their place in peace. And Moses hearkened unto the voice of his father-in-law that he did, and all that he had. And Moses chose out every man out of all of Israel, and made them the heads over people, and the people over rulers, over uh, over thousands, rulers over hundreds, rulers over fifties, and rulers over ten. And they shall judge the people at all seasons, and hard causes they shall bring unto Moses, and every small matter they shall judge themselves. And Moses let his father-in-law depart, and he went his way into his own land. Now, uh, another time, Moses tried to get him to stay with him, but he said, no, 
So he came and he wanted the benefit of Moses and he didn't want nothing out and he dipped. He came and he brought his wife and he brought his sons. He gave wisdom to Moses and he just dipped. He wanted the best for Moses, the best for his family, the best for Israel, and he smashed out. No strings attached. Let's keep going. Give me Job. Give me Job. I'm going to go quick now. Then we'll get some examples on how to deal with people. Job. Chapter 1. Job chapter 1. So, I'm going to read fast. I didn't know I was running late. Job chapter 1. There was a man in the land whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and right, one that feared of God and excused with evil. He had sons and daughters. So, I'm going to go down to uh, verse 6. And there was a day when the sons of God came and to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Almighty said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? And then Satan said unto the Almighty, From going to and fro the earth, and from walking unto down it. And the Almighty said, Has thou considered my servant gold? There is none like him on the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that fear of God and escheweth evil. And Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job uh, fear the Almighty for naught? So he said, Is he serving you because it's beneficial for him? Check this out. Has thou not made a hedge about him, and has that, uh, uh, about his house, and all that he has on every side, and thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and all that is substance, and has increased the land? But pour forth thy hand now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to his face. So now he's saying, well, the all, uh, uh, Job's a chameleon, essentially. He's just serving you because it's beneficial for him. But when it's not beneficial for him, you'll realize that he's not genuine. He's a chameleon, right? Essentially right. Let's keep going. Verse 12. And the Almighty said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power, only in himself put forth not thy hands. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Almighty. And there was a day when the sons of the, and his daughters were eating and drinking in the elder's brother in his house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen were plowing and, and the donkeys feeding beside them, and the Sabaeans fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they have slain their servants with the edge of the sword, and I only escaped alone to tell thee. And while he was yet speaking, there came also and said, The fire of the Almighty has fallen upon heaven. I have burned up the sheep and the servants that consume them, and I am only escaped to tell thee. I was yet speaking. Another said, The Chaldeans have made out of the three bands that fell upon the camels and carried them away, yea, and slayed their servants with the edge of the sword, and I am only am escaped alone to tell thee. I was yet speaking. There came also another and said, Thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking to thy eldest brother's house, and behold, there came great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and fell upon the young man. And they are dead, and I am escaped alone to tell thee. And Job arose and rent his uh, rent his mantle and shaved off his head, and he fell down upon the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I came out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return unto the Almighty. I gave, and the Almighty hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Almighty. In all this, Job sinned not, nor charged the Almighty foolishly. And that's the difference between genuine people that genuinely care for you. And Job genuinely had a love for the Most High because we will still love even when it's inconvenient for us. In a marriage, it is not always beneficial for the wife and it's not always beneficial for the husband. But we genuinely care for our wife and we genuinely care for our husband. So you may go through a six month stretch where your husband's getting on your nerves or your wife is getting on your nerves or this or this. You may go through a down period. But you genuinely care for that person and you get through. You don't just say, okay, let's get a divorce. You don't wake up one morning like a lot of women have, Western women, just wake up and say, I'm unhappy. I'm depressed. I need to find myself. I need to heal. I'm getting a divorce. We don't do that. Because then you were never junior from the get-go. I was telling uh, my wife a long time ago, and a reason why is like uh, if a woman cheats... It says, okay, I want it really, I'm not saying I want my wife to cheat or nothing, but it says you can never take my wife or you can never take my girl. You can only take my hoe. If she's going to cheat on me, she was never mine. So it was just my turn. If it took 12 years or it took 15 years and she finally cheats on me, she was never mine. And vice versa for a man. If he cheats on you, he was never yours. You know what I'm saying? It's worse for a man because why don't you just get a second wife? It just makes no sense for you to just cheat. Why don't you man up and do your work and uh, be financially stable and be able to hold two homes and two uh, uh, straight health insurance and dental plans and all that, life insurance, all that stuff, right? But 
So, if they're genuine, if it's not beneficial for them, they'll still be there in your corner. Our relationship with the Most High, there's times where it's not beneficial for us. There's times for that. Let's go to Ecclesi, Ecclesiastics, because I got to go quick. Ecclesiastics. Chapter 3. Verse 3. Uh, we'll go with verse 1. For everything there is a season and a time, a purpose under heaven. There's a time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal, a time to break down, a time to build up. A time to weep, a time to laugh, a time to mourn, a time to dance. A time to cast away stones, a time to gather stones together. A time to brace, a time to refrain from bracing, which we need to start doing from these chameleons, right? A time to get a time to lose, a time to keep, a time to cast away, a time to rend, a time to sow, a time to keep silence, a time to speak, a time to love, a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. So there's a time to get and there's a time to lose. And Job was in that time to lose. And even when I was talking about Whitney, because the last month I haven't been working, I've been working a little bit, but not a 40 hours, you know, like 16 hours, right? And so money's a little tight, but... I'm like, man, I was telling Whitney the other day, like, man, we're about due. We're about due. It's been super good for like three years straight besides the COVID saga, right? Oh, I shouldn't have said that. But anyways, but uh, besides that, you know, we're about due for a time to lose. We're about due for a financial struggle. I'm not saying I want it, but there's a time and season for everything. And me struggling for another year, if, I hope I don't, but... I'm going to praise the almighty anyways, because my relationship, I'm not a chameleon. I'm genuine. I have a genuine relationship where everyone at true is united. The people that watch me, I genuinely want you to be saved. I always say I am not the only one. There's many teachers out there. Please find a congregation. I am one of many, but one of few. There's few ministers teaching truth, but there's many. I'm not the only one. You could be saved outside of True Hebrews United Congregation. I've never said that. I, I want you to genuinely be saved, whether whatever congregation you find out that has the foundations of the apostles and prophets, you're sure I'm a sheep being the chief cornerstone. Find where the Almighty wants to plant you, right? I genuinely want people to be saved. And I genuinely have love for people at True Hebrews United. And I have a genuine love for the Most High. So even if I lose everything, and I hope I don't, but that I could still have the same testimony as Job. And that's the same thing with dealing with these people in your life. When it becomes inconvenient for them, they will drop you. They will drop you. They will divorce you. They will disassociate yourself from you. Perfect example. Now I'm going to get into the abstract and how to deal with these chameleons. I'll use the example with, um, um, let's go with, uh, where we at? We'll go with Fat Joe. We'll go with Fat Joe. Uh, I was, uh, Fat Joe's some rapper. I don't listen to rap or anything like that, but I just seen his testimony and he, and he had a lot of money and he had 50 guys. Wherever he went, he brought 50 guys. They had 50 escalades. They ran like, it, like the president. Like when they went to clubs, they come 50 deep. And after a couple of years, he said he ran a test. He put a load, he put a strain, he put an inconvenience, and he had a meeting. He had all 50 of them came. When they went to jail and whatnot, he bailed them out, paid for their lawyers. And he said, hey, I'm just letting you know, man, I don't got it like that. Money used to be good, but I don't got it like that. I'm not going to be able to fund us just rolling and funding the clubs, paying for the plane tickets. I'm not going to be able to do it like that. You know what I'm saying? It, you know, and it says only out of the 50, only six of them said, man, if you're dead broke, I'll be with you. So for years, he's been paying for the plane tickets, paying for the ride, the gas, the clubs, the VIP, the this and this, the hotel parties. He's been funding the whole thing. 50 deep. They come in in suits, this and this. The jury had him had it, all his 50 boys iced up. The women, they were living good. But he says, I don't have it like that anymore. And only six out of 50 said, bro, if you're dead broke, I got your back. Six out of 50. And you look at 
for he says he was doing this for years. So for years, you had 44 people just eating away, eating away, just just like a leech, a mosquito, a tick, a parasite, taking a tapeworm, just sucking your resources away. How much money he could have saved if he just had those six dudes, if he would have just filtered out those six dudes. Another example, recent woman breaks up with a dude, dude uh, gets out of high school or gets out of college and he didn't get picked uh, for the NBA. He didn't get picked for, I forgot his name. The day, the uh, girl, the day he didn't get picked for the draft, he didn't get drafted for the NBA. The same day she found out, she broke up with him. A year later, he gets picked up and signs a $28 million deal for the NBA. I don't know what team. I forgot the name of this. Bat. But she broke up with him the same day. Now, I personally believe that was hard because he should have been looking for red flags, especially if you know you're going to be pro. You should really be looking for red flags with women. But, of course, they're going to they're gonna make sure there's no flag seen. They're going to, oh, I love you, and I want to spend the rest of my life in this and this because you're headed to the NBA. That's a free meal ticket. As soon as he, and this is what I'm saying is if we don't work on our discernment, whether it's a $28 million deal and she wanted to be with him and have one kid and be set for life, have one kid and then leave him and be set for life, right? And or if it's a guy went on four different dates with four different women and all four of those girls didn't want nothing to do, that's $60, $120, $180, $240. So imagine you go on a date with this girl, and then you go on one date, and then she's not cool. All right, whatever, ghost you. If you go on a date with this, a couple months later, you're going on a different date. You're going, to, you go on four dates, but these girls just want free food. So you spent 240 bucks on girls that have no interest in you. They just want free food. They just want. They were just bored. So you see this, and that's a situation where you don't really know. It's hard to catch red flags through text, uh, through text message, or over the phone, or something. You won't find out till you go on date one, or date two, or date three, right? But it's more beneficial for us to limit the amount of people that we allow in our life that we see that's not genuine. And so this is what we're going to deal with it. Now, back to this. This service is going to be a little bit long. Hopefully this helps you guys out. Let me read some of these comments. I realize that uh, most people aren't appreciative when I read the story of the Messiah healing the ten blind men. And one return to thank him. That's a good example. That's a good example. Because they they come with genuine people. They're 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 the people in this chameleons. I call them chameleons because they want you to let your guard down. They can't take resources for you unless you let your guard down, right? So they have to live a lie. And the fact that they got a lie to build a relationship with you shows you that they don't have you in their best interest, right? So let's keep going. All right, so. Where's my notes at? What, what I've done, I'm not going to tell you how I do it and what I'm going to do, but I remember the date, May 2nd, I made a change. I said, from now on, I am going to shrink this down. You're either going to be here or here. I don't allow, I am no longer allowing people to be here. I, I, if you can't place yourself, then I will place you. This won't happen. If I don't see that you're genuine, then you're going to be placed here. If I can. There's some people that have to be here. There's some people that you work with. There's some people that you just have to deal with that just has to be here. But I'm going to tell you how you deal with these people, right? So, I'm not suggesting you do what I do. I'm not going to tell you what I do. I'm not going to tell you the methods I do. But trust me and believe. As of May 2nd of this year, I decided that, hey, enough is enough. I'm not going to let these people be my ruin. So, um, you use these people for their strengths, use them for their strengths, right? So, uh, I'll, I'll, we're going to come to that. Let's use an example. We had a housekeeper. We had a house helper, our housekeeper. We had two of them. One of them, um, we come with good faith. We give people good faith and, uh, we don't, I don't necessarily give people the benefit of the doubt, but we come with good faith and, you know, Yes, you're coming for a job, but I, I genuinely wouldn't mind you coming to the house. And how was your day? How was your kids? And I have care, care and concern for you as a human being or as a soul. Like, I still have care, even though you're coming. If you, someone comes to wash my car, 
I actually generally care about people, right? And she was cool. And then, you know, when I come, I'll bring uh, uh, chocolates or this, or that. I'll give her gifts. Sometimes I'll get stuff for her kids. And she will go out of her way to help us out, too. It lasted for years, two, three years, whatever, right? Right? And then that fell away. Her foot hurt, whatever, right? Whatever, right? She was disingenuous. She turned, she was probably genuine and fell back into disingenuous or something, right? It fell off. Then we had another maid come, and she didn't want nothing to do with the kids. She didn't want to talk to us. She, she was just there for the money. And that's cool. And use these people for their strength. All right, we'll keep a straight business. You set the tempo, and that's the tempo. You come for money, we just use you. It's pure business. Pure business. You know what I'm saying? I could at least respect her because she didn't try to be a chameleon. She just said, hey, I'm just here for work. I don't care if you die. I don't care if you live. I don't care for this. You call me, I care, I work, I go home. I don't care about you, I don't care about your kids, I don't care. At least, at least she was in this category of not interested. She didn't play the chameleon. Because you'll have people come and play the chameleon just so they could get more research, just so they could ask to borrow money, just so they could do something. We had people come and they'll act super cool. And, uh, and, and sure enough, I'm like watching a couple of months, they're going to want to borrow some money. And sure enough, a couple months later, I'm not talking about people in the people at our congregation. That's what we're for. We're for to help brothers, sisters out. That has nothing to do with people that's baptized, living holy. You're supposed to help them out. I'm talking about sinners or people on the outside that they're cool with you and they know in a roundabout way I'm gonna come back and after I build a connection with them, hey man, you got a couple hundred bucks I can borrow. Hey, 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 hey. Like these people that actually borrow money, then they don't pay it back, and then they wait a long time, and then they come back and actually borrow money again. I always tell him, hey, man, I don't lend out money again until you pay me the second time. This one dude asked to borrow money again. I'm like, bro, you never pay me the 10 bucks. And he's like, oh, yeah, yeah. And he still hasn't paid me. And it's like, but I, you use them for their strengths. Now, this is how you deal with these chameleons if you can't get them out of your life, right? Use them for their strengths and don't leave yourself vulnerable. So use them for their strengths. And you're going to say, wait up, Simon. You're saying use these chameleons for the strength. But wouldn't that make you a chameleon? Because they're using you for your strength or your resource. They have no intentions of being with you uh, uh, and, and concerned about you. And they're just using you to siphon you for your resource, your time, your energy. And now you say use them. Now the difference is, is why you're not is because you came to these people with good faith. And they have proven themselves that they really don't care about you, right? They have proven themselves. So what I'm saying is use them for their strength, meaning... Let's say you have a sister or a brother or a nephew that you have to be around. You can't really cut them off, right? But you know they don't really care about you. They say, hey, man, I'll, 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 uh, they're a family member, so hey, hey, if I pay you, can you babysit? That's it. You, okay, well, since you're around me and I can't just get rid of you, then hey, I'll pay you to babysit or I'll pay you to do this or I'll pay you to do that. Use them for what they're good at then. And do not leave yourself vulnerable. Do not go to them for counsel. Do not go to them to vent because there's likelihood if they don't care about you, they'll gossip about you. They'll bite, backbite about you. They'll take that information and use it against you. Do not go for them. Only use them for what is beneficial to you. And it's not that you're trying to be a chameleon. They have established that relationship. I come to people with good faith and, and want to be genuine and establish genuine relationships and care about people's soul. Especially me because I'm in here to save souls and bring them to the Almighty. I don't naturally say, but I bring people to the truth and they repent and get saved. The Almighty saves, right? But if they already set the tone in the temple, I can't force them to love me. I can't force them to like me. But I'll just pay you to babysit. Or I'll pay you to do that. Or I'll pay you to do this. If it's that uncle that gets on your nerve, but he's a mechanic, then don't don't leave yourself vulnerable. Just only use him to work on mechanical work. Don't try to uh, appease him and try to bring a cake and try to establish a relationship and you're always calling to him and he's not calling you and this and this do not try to build something if, if they like you if they love you they're going to do it naturally you can't force someone to love you these simps that simp over women they these women would never respect them and if these women marry a simp it's because all their other options have failed and now i have to settle down for a simp which a man i really don't respect because I am too old and I can't compete against the younger girls. All my options is fails. So my last resort is me to marry a simp. But 
they'll never get the respect and you think these simps think oh i won now she likes me now the light clicked on now she realized nah bro she never realized she was never in your corner and like manner these you can't force them to love you you can't force them to treat you right the best thing you could do is cut them off if you can i'm not going to get into too much of that that's off your own now do not leave yourself vulnerable with these people all right so this is where the chess game works for your benefit make your moves based upon if you have four people let's say you have four people right three of them are chameleons and one of them is in your corner genuine say your mom and then you have some some uh siblings brothers and sisters your mom's in your corner or say your mom's not in your corner but you have that one brother in your corner if you know if you're gonna make moves make moves based upon only the brother being able to help you out if something falls don't make moves and put yourself vulnerable to where you need to call your mom in a time of need and she lets you down. Don't make moves assuming that your sister is going to help you watch the kids or is going to pick up the slack if you call and then now you're upset. You should not left yourself vulnerable. Don't use chameleon. Don't put yourself in a position where you need the chameleons. Because you're going to play a chess game and you're going to make moves thinking that you have four people in your corner when you really only have one and now you made a move and now you're at a setback you're at a loss because you made a decision thinking you have this many people in your corner and you really don't you're in a situation where you think these people are going to visit you when you're in jail and they really don't you think this person's not going to uh, uh, is going to help take care of your mom or help do this or help do that and they really don't like there was a situation where a minister uh we had a brother of the Almighty pass away. Now, I don't know if he could sit back and he could watch. Okay, I'm gone. Who really is in my uh, wife's and in my daughter's corner? If he sits back and he watched all the people that he showed love and all the time energy, now I have, I left a wife and my child behind. This is going to show who really genuinely had love and care for concern for me. Who really is there to step up and help my wife and my kid that I left behind? I wonder if he could sit back and he could look at every person that he dealt with. And then he realized like, man, dude, these same people I thought was in my corner weren't even in my corner. And this is why we need to pray for discernment. Because you will make moves to your own ruin. Thinking people's in your corner when they're not so please pray for discernment make better choices make better rules. i i guarantee you you will save money time energy emotions energy just it's draining when you're trying to help i don't know if you ever been there there was a person where i was on the phone on the phone with uh hours at a time hours on the phone with them what's weird is i was hours on the phone with this individual uh, calling this individual once a week on the Sabbath, two hours, this and this. This dude finally comes, gets baptized, do this. And then when it's time to do something like Zooms, can't even give me an hour on Zooms. But I was hours on the phone with this dude. Sent this dude a uh, laptop, sent this dude fringes, this, this, Bible book cover. Put time and energy into a person that ain't really about nothing. Wasn't about nothing. And they just waste your time and energy. And I can't make up those hours. I can't make, I can make that money up, but I can't make up that time and energy. And I'm emotionally invested into you when you're not invested into salvation, nor into me, nor into the brothers and sisters at True Hebrews United. And so then it's like, you wasted my life. So because of that, not because of that situation, but because me, I keep seeing this pattern where I keep letting my guard down because I'm trying to save souls so it's hard not to, you keep letting your guard down and it's only to your ruin. And so at some point, as you pray for discernment, you need to say, whoa, bro, let them set the terms. When you see they're not invested, then stop being invested. You're gonna find out when you pull back and then uh, you pretty much you took their clothes off and they're naked, so they're not a chameleon anymore. They're, they they were dressed just like you, and you took their clothes off by saying you took a step back and you stopped being invested in them. 
some some of them they're they're not used to being exposed for who they are and they work harder to try to be like they'll put more energy in you to try to be a chameleon again and you're like nah man I already seen you're naked i see who you are i see what you're about i pulled back from this I, i'm dealing with two employees i pulled back i stopped talking to them i only talked to him about work i pulled back this dude's going out of his way to try to talk to me and whatnot i keep it real dry real simple he was putting no energy in it and he was doing me grimy and gossiping and whatnot behind my back so now he's all going because you're i see you for who you are and you want to keep the chameleon uh attire on and you want me to let my guard down and you want me to think you want me to see you for the portrait you're trying to the lie you want me to believe the portrait that is a lie you want me to see you for that and not see you for who you are and because i see you for who you are you can't stab me in the back you can't do me grimy you can't siphon my resource and take time and energy and emotion and all this stuff you can't get knowledge from me so it's like no cut that stuff off cut that stuff off I believe through this service, if you took the time and you think about all these people, there's at least one person you know you need to start taking a step back and pulling off. There's at least one person. You ain't going to tell me you don't have no chameleons in your life. Use some discernment that you could say, you know what? It is no longer beneficial to, for me to continue to associate myself with this person. I am going to cut this person off starting today. Starting today, there is no reason because I am invested in this and I am not getting a return of my investment. It should Love should be reciprocated. Care, concern, reciprocated. Mutual understanding and respect. So, with all that said and being done, let's read some comments. 240. Took you a while to to get to 240 I don't get what that means so with that said being done keep standing don't drop standards give the almighty a hand clap shalom